Cool. Hi everybody. I can see uh, I can see a couple of familiar faces. Alison. Uh, hiya. How you doing? Um, and uh, I think there's a few other people that I know as well. And they will know, of course, and obviously uh, Eddie. Um, so for anybody I don't know, um, welcome. Um, I'm Darren, um, also known as the Naked Scrum Master. And I'm going to be, well, we're going to have a, like a nice creative time now for about an hour or so. It's a balmy summer's evening, so I actually wasn't expecting anybody to be here. <laughs> but we do have a few people here, which is great. We have more than a few people, which is brilliant. So uh, thank you for devoting an hour of your precious evening time um, to this session. Um, I can promise you it's going to be a PowerPoint-driven, 50-slide, fully text-driven type of uh, session. So sit back, um, you know, try to stave off the boredom, because we're going. That's what. No, we're not. Gonna, no, we're not doing any of that. Okay. I've got, I've got three slides which we're going to cover now in the space of about three seconds, and then we're going to go straight into drawing. Okay. So bear with me whilst I try and share my screen. This is when it all goes wrong for me. Right. Here we go. I'm sharing now. Thumbs up if you can see my screen. Yay! Brilliant. Okay. So. Just always do this, right? Just to make sure everybody's in the right space, the right room. Um, this is not a coronavirus update. This is sketch noting, and we're particularly going to be focusing on people and interactions today. Um, so this is just a little excerpt from my virtual, big virtual course that Eddie spoke about um, that I'm currently kind of putting together for you lovely people. So um, who am I? Here we are. This is me. Um, uh, known as the Naked Scrum Master. I have my own web blog, thenakedscrummaster.com, and I'm on Twitter, but I don't really do much on Twitter. That's a bit too newfangled for me. Um, uh, that's at the Naked Scrummy, um, and I have my little logo. So that's cool. That's me. That's slide two done. Slide three, and the final slide of the evening. People interaction. So basically, um, we're going to be learning how we can show emotion, activity, and action, um, and how we can show people. Right, so if you've done any visual sketch noting before, you'll know that people form a big part of that, of your tool set. Um, and when you're trying to visualize and tell a story, normally people are in that story. Okay, so it's worth to have a, a good understanding of how you might convey emotion, activity, action, so on and so forth. Now, I always say you don't have to be an artist to do sketch noting. Take me, for example, I am no, in no way, shape, or form am I an artist. Um, I may be an artist of another form that Eddie can tell you about, but as far as I'm not a drawing artist, right? So, um, but I've just learned this along the way. I found it a really useful tool to have in my coaching. Um, and I'm a visual, visual person and I think visually and I gen tend to explain things visually as well. And you might be that sort of person as well. Um, and if you are, this will really kind of resonate with you. So we're going to cover these, these items or try to cover them. I've already put, I've got, Eddie, you'll be pleased to know I'm getting better at my timing. I've got one of these clocks that kind of helps, hopefully. So I've halved it. So I'll do that and then stick another half an hour at the end of it, right? So that doesn't mean I'll stay in time. You know me, but we'll try and get through all this stuff, okay? So we're going we're gonna to start off with a quick warm up just to get our hands ready and all that kind of stuff and lovely with the pens and the paper. Um, we're going to do stick man evolution. Then we're going to teach how to do some basic direction using the nose and cap method, as I call it. Then how we do emotions with eyebrows and mouth shapes and that kind of nonsense. Body language, um, how you use body language and effects lines to en put energy into your drawings. Um, and how you can use effect lines and shadows to show movement. Um, and we're going to get look at some set settings and perspective. Then we're going to do the six step portrait, how to create a portrait in six steps. And then we're going to maybe do in some detail of that. Um, and then we're going to take a selfie, right? Okay, so buckle up, get in, buckle up, get ready for the ride. It's going to be a fast one. Um, Eddie doesn't like to go over time. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll be punished. So um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen now and we're going to do some drawing. Okay, now hopefully everybody has got pens and paper because if you haven't it's going to be tricky if you've got an ipad great eddie's going to give it a go on his ipad tonight so uh, i've not really used an ipad drawing thing before but you know um eddie's going to give it a go give us some feedback on that so if you haven't got that you just a pen and a paper the best pens are obviously you know i don't get commissioned for this but you know the neuland i don't know if you've been on any sessions before you've probably seen these neuland pens 
basically it's a it's an ink pen but it's got a wedge nib right so it's got like a a wedge nib yeah um and that's ideally what you want now if you haven't got that doesn't matter right doesn't matter it just gives a nice little extra perspective if you do um now these are from germany you import them from germany or there's a site in the uk you can get i can send loads of details of that after this session um these are very freely available these are pro markers that you can get from amazon uh other places um other shops are available um and these are the ones we used at the lean agile conference um and he spent a lot of money on these are great because you've got um a wedge tip one side and then on the other side you've got a fine tip a fine bullet tip so they're quite neat to get. The only downside with these is they do bleed through the paper. All right, so be wary if you're gonna use them, you probably can't use the other side of the paper. So for sketch noting, that can become a bit of a problem. And that's why these outliner pens from Neuland are superb. They do not bleed, it's amazing. When other things bleed, these do not bleed. Okay, so we're gonna start sketching, right? But first I need to test your eyesight. I need to test that you're able to see this paper. So I prepared something earlier. Can you all read that? Okay, I'm, only get, I'm not getting any audio feedback, that disappoints me. It's like when I tell my jokes at work, there's this kind of just rolling tumbleweed moment. <laughs> and then I realize, oh yeah, everybody must be on the audio mute, but no, they're not on audio mute. They're you know, live and kicking, they just don't find my jokes funny. Anyway. So hopefully you can all read that. They able to unmute themselves, so. <laughs> Go for unmuting, because I, I, need, I need feedback. So cool. Unless you're in a noisy environment and then feel free to mute. You know, you know the rules. So we're gonna just start off by um, doing some straight line practice, okay? So we're just gonna warm up with some straight lines and some circles, okay? So if you've got a nib pen, then you can obviously use your nib pen to do some nice straight lines like so. Right, um, you can also draw straight lines in that direction as well. And the good thing about having a nib pen is that when you do the downstroke, you get a nice thick line. And when you do the cross stroke, you get a nice thin line if you're holding your pen correctly. Like that, right? So, so Darren, it's Anu here. Yep. Do, you hold, do you hold the, the wedge like horizontally? Is that what you do? Like? Yeah, so the wedge is in a horizontal position. Yeah, absolutely right. So when you drag it down the page, so if I put it on there and I drag it down the page, it's going to be a nice thick line. Okay. If I put it there and drag it across, it's going to be a thin line. Okay. All right, got you. Thank you. Yeah. If, you have, if you've got a bullet nib, it doesn't matter. You're just going to, it doesn't matter. You won't get a thick or thin line. That's why we say get a wedge because it actually kind of gives a bit more life to your drawings ultimately. Um, but it doesn't really matter. So anybody here actually, can you hold up what pens you got? Just want to have a quick look for those on video. Oh, we've got pro markers, nice. You've got some standard markers, that's cool. You've got a oh, flip chart marker, they're good. Yeah, Suda, not sure what that is. Just a normal pen, that's cool. Uh, oh, you've got a nice combination. Excellent, okay. So guys, you know, I can't see your drawings, but I'm gonna have to assume that you are drawing away, right? So, great, so something we can all read. Oh, excellent, thank you, Alison. Nice feedback. Alison has done some lovely lines, right? So just get the juices flowing, right? Just get the juices flowing. Yay, keep going, keep going, it's fun. Brilliant stuff. Right, so that's straight lines. And of course, then that's, that's easy enough, but then, yeah, let's get into the circular movement. The circular movement is good to get a warm up on to start drawing some circles, can be quite tricky. Try and get those lines to join, not like that, but like that. Try not to smudge. So as Eddie said at the start, right, this is all about experimentation and fun. It doesn't matter about your artistic endeavor, okay? And you can have lots of mistakes. It doesn't really matter. There is no mistakes. There are no mistakes, right? This is not about art, it's about message, right? So when you're visually telling a story, the message is important. So cool, okay, so I'm gonna keep going because I've still got some more space on my paper. Excellent. So how are we doing, people? All good? Give me some feedback, guys. Give me your mute again. Hey, 
look at that. Eddie, is that on your iPad? Oh, cool. That's neat. That's neat. I like it. Yeah, brilliant. Kids doing well there? Yes, yeah, Suda, excellent. Nice and lovely. Angie, yeah, looking good. I miss yours, Eric. Excellent. You've done that before, my friend. Right, okay. Cool. All right. We're all looking good. I think I'm, I'm reverting to the protocol of going on mute when I'm not speaking, which I'm using on Zoom calls all day long. But yeah, just... Don't don't be shy, folks. You can go on off uh, off mute if you if you like and show yeah. it, Aaron, or tell him to s slow down or speed up. He he appreciates it. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Right, so cool. So yeah, here we go. Then I'm just going to get another piece of piece of paper. So that's the warm up. So we are here to talk about that great principle in the agile world of people interactions. Yeah. People in interactions over processes and tools, right? People in interactions. We've done some lines and circles. So that's looking like, is that looking like it's mirror writing to you? Or is that the right no, way around? No, that's fine. See, on the my video, it looks like I'm looking in a mirror. That's no good, is it? <laughs> so lines and circles warm up. Now, stick man evolution. It's a good job I prepared this, right? <laughs> so, okay. You can see the amount of preparation I've done. Right, okay, so stick man evolution, here we go. How does it work? Right, so that's a little fella there. We're gonna work through these steps. So your basic stick man, right? This, I usually start with this because people say, I can't draw. And you say, well, yes, you can. You can probably draw a stick man. Okay, we'll draw a stick man then. Head, body. And you normally get something like that, right? As your stick man, because they've all played What's it called? We have to guess the letters. Hang, hangman, whatever it's called. Yeah, yeah. So we've all played that. So it's cool. So we can draw a stick man, no problem, right? So how do you get that stick man into a nice, nice, proper looking man? Well, the first next step you do is to add the joints. Okay. So a leg has joints, right? And arms have joints. Yeah. So draw the joints. How are you doing, kids? You're looking self-absorbed and getting into it. Good stuff. Let's have a look. Oh, you've got colours. Yes. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah we got some colours. you got it all going on there, haven't you? Absolutely. Brilliant. We can get Great them to stuff. take over if Darren falters. Yeah. <laughs> They'll do a far better job than I will as well. So the next <laughs> thing to do, so we've got the, got the joints. Next step, add the body, right? So instead of having like this stick body, you know, give it an actual kind of rectangle shaped body. Okay, and then put the joint, jointed limbs in. Okay, um, next thing to do is um, we add hands and feet. So step four, we've got this. Um, we've got a jointed leg, got jointed arms, and we've got hands. Now hands and feet. Simply, they're just little dashes. You don't have to get fancy. If people start to get fancy with hands and feet, they get themselves in all sort of a pickle, right? Because even the greatest artists of the day struggled with drawing hands, right? Hands are really difficult for, to draw for some reason. Don't know why. Anyway, there you are, Stickman Evolution. We've gone from that to this. So if somebody says you can't draw, you can draw. You know, just, just steps and things to, to, to do to get there, right? So here we are, we've got this fella. Now you can start to enhance this if you want. Right, so you could say, actually, heads are ne never usually, apart from my mate who's called Moonface, heads aren't normally completely round, apart from my mate, Moonface, hence his nickname. But heads aren't normally round, so if you do it again, you're going to draw more of an oval shape for a head, right? More of an oval shape. Yeah, and then the body. The other thing about drawing a shape as well, uh, a person as well, is to always draw the head first, because... The size of the head gives you the dimensions of the body, right? Sometimes if you start off with a body and you draw the head, somebody with a tiny, a tiny little head or a massive big head. So this is helping us with the dimensions of the body, right? So now we've got our legs, our arms, okay, which is great. We've now got a little bit, a little bit better there, and it's all about slight little improvements, right? So the next thing we're going to cover now we've got our man is direction showing which wh which way he's looking and the way we do that is we use this cap and nose method called i came out all with that myself that cap and nose method 
Right, so this guy is here. I'm going to draw another guy over here. It's good to draw as many guys as you want because it gives you the practice, right? It's all about practice. So I've got another guy over here. But what's happening with these guys? So here, here we're going to start to get into our people now and interactions, okay? So you've got two guys, but are, are they interacting? Don't know. Are they just standing there looking towards the camera? Could be. Looks like they are at the moment. But I could use a nose to tell me where they're looking. This guy his nose is pointing that way and down. This guy's nose is pointing that way and up. Right, so now we start to see a little bit of direction. I'm not sure I did that big enough for the screen. Okay, if I haven't done that big enough for the screen, I can do this cap technique, which will really show it. So I'm gonna draw a cap. I'm gonna draw a cap on this fella. I like the way the nose of the guy on the right seems to be looking up a bit, you know, like he's looking down at the other person. Yeah. <laughs> and this guy's looking down a bit. He's looking up a bit. Yeah, there's there's body language. Yeah, there's good things to see in this. Yeah, well spotted. Um, and then you can you can put eyes in. You don't need to kind of dress the face when you're doing figures like this. In actual fact, you're better off not doing that because it just complicates things more than it needs to be. Yeah. When we get onto portraits later, that's when we're actually trying to draw a cartoon of someone. So we need to do the eyes and face and everything. But what did you when you're draw drawing cap. What what was that? Was a cap? What did you do just to stick out of his head? Yeah, so basically, here's a, that's his head. Mm. You, you just draw a shape like that. Oh, I see. Right. It's that simple. Are we allowed to colour it in yet? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go on to colouring then. I'm going to be driven by the audience, which means Darren, we'll be here about three hours. Darren, Hello. before you go crazy colouring in, yeah. uh, what about drawing a lady? Ah, join a lady, right, join a lady, right, okay, that's easy, what you do is you go like that. <laughs> it's like an S, you start here and just draw it around the head. And of course that can give you direction as well, you see. Yeah, a bit more of a beehive that one. And, and, and what about with the fuller body? Where are you going with this, Eddie? <laughs> We've got kids on the line. I'm just saying that if, if I want to draw a, a, a lady yeah. who's not a stick person. Yeah. <laughs> right, yeah, okay. I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to let you dig up. <laughs> no. <I'm not. laughs> okay. So a lady. I'm well intentioned right. here, I'm well intentioned. So, well, you've got to be careful, right? Yeah. There is such thing as called sex discrimination, Eddie. You're probably not aware of it because you're from Ireland, right? But uh, so let me draw. <laughs> so I think it's, 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 it's as simple as doing the skirt, isn't it? I think, really. So yeah. you can do this kind of thing, yeah, for a lady. Uh, yeah. yeah. That's, exactly then the legs, what, that's exactly what uh, I was looking for. Yeah. And then the legs come out there. And then obviously give her a hairstyle if you want. Yeah, so use the dress symbol Thank if you. you need to donate female. Um, hair usually does it though. You don't normally need to do that. Um, but yeah, cool. So ladies, gentlemen, nose, caps and hair. And it gives, uh, gives us direction. Right, moving on. I've got 10 minutes to, I've got 10 minutes to get through. Have you seen all this? I've got 10 minutes to get through all of this. It's not gonna happen. Right, okay, so. Okay, so we've got we've got basic people, right? We can, that's all great. Okay, um, now they're not showing any emotions, are they, at the moment? And you might want to give them a bit of emotion, right? Now it's really easy to do simply by using what we call the eyebrow, what I call the eyebrow and mouth shape emotion shower method. I right, just made that up. So um, it's really so you use the eyebrow. So let's. Let's do eyes. Eyes, are, let's, eyes just stay as they are, right? We can't really show pe smiling eyes. We're not, we're not Leonardo Vin da Vinci painting the Mona Lisa here, right? So get your eyes in there. So you've got your circles for your face. You've got your eyes in there. Nice. Now, happy person. Well, we all know how to do a happy person, right? It's just that. Simply that. But you can also use eyebrows to kind of accentuate as well. And what you're doing with there is like a up shape like that for the eyebrows, okay? Is it a little bit more? Okay, so a sad face. 
Okay, and then the eyebrows are more sort of down there like that. Make a descent. So it's, this is like eyebrows lifting. So when you draw it, draw it up like that. This is like eyebrows down, drawn down like that. Make sense? Okay, so right, then we've got someone who, this is, this is supposed to be shy, but it's just like you just turn the mouth up a little bit. Could be shy, could be confused, you know. Amazing how the eyebrow suddenly gives it a little bit of extra emotion as well. So a little bit more than your standard smiley sticking eyebrows on and that's all you need to do right so this guy this guy so this guy's an angry fella so he's got his mouth is all like that and that you've got very angular for angry people make them really angular yeah and so everything about them is angular so darren you creating only your eyebrows or you're creating eyes also the eyes are there, but all they are just li two little dashes. That's all they are at the moment. Like that. That's all it is. Everything else is done through mouth and eyebrow shape. Make sense? Right, that was done quickly. Okay. So, we spoke a little bit about body language. There's some more stuff about body language. And really, all I'm going to say about body language is think about the angle of the head. All right, so let's draw someone. Now I'm going to draw this person. This person I know is despondent. So I'm going to draw his, normally you draw your head sort of shaped like that. And because we're ovals, we can now kind of shape it and drop it down. So it's angled down. And then when we draw the head underneath it, you can see how it starts to, this person is looking down, right? You can then use your nose and cap method to accentuate it even further, but you generally don't need to. The next thing to try and use is actually, if you give him his legs, okay, now, and then you just droop his arms, right? So if you droop his arms down, almost straight down like that, he's looking a bit down. And then if you want to even accentuate even more, you can just draw some tears coming down, right? So this is how you might draw the emotion of despondency or sadness, yeah? And it's all body language stuff, yeah? Head, head down, yeah? Um, okay, so there's some good ones here. This one I really like. I'm gonna skip a load of them that I prepared, but this one I quite like, because it reminds me of a certain painting by Edvard Munch. So this is, this is, a, this is a nice one, it's right, worth trying. And this has got a lot of energy in, and stuff in this. To demonstrate a lot of things in just this one little item here. Okay, so this little fella is doing lots of things for us. What is he doing for us? He is showing, and I'm gonna start coloring now as well. Who was it who said about coloring? Was it Chris or Eric? Yeah, I'm just coloring. So coloring. So Ah, so these are great pens to have. They're, they're from Neuland as well. They're called Neuland Big Ones, uh, and they're big markers with wedge nibs. So if you can find a big marker with a wedge nib, you're golden. But these are good because what's great about these is they don't smudge when you go over the outliner. It's clever stuff. If I go over the outliner, there's no smudging. See that? That black is not smudging. Other pens may not do the same, right? So that's what's really good about these, and I would encourage you to buy these these Neuland pens. Okay, so coloring. So all we need to do is, guys, all we're going to do with regards to coloring is color their torsos. Okay, that's all we're going to do. Okay. Oh, now, when with the highlighter pen, yeah. With so a I big wedge. My husband to pass me a highlighter. All right. <laughs> Here you go. There you go. You got it. <laughs> right. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, and always when you're coloring in, don't try and don't overlap the colors. It's difficult, but don't try, don't you overlap. You don't provide an assistant for the person who's doing the course, Angie, so can't be provide <laughs> assistance for everyone on the course. <laughs> cool.
Cool. So that's your colouring, uh, as far as people are concerned. Pretty straightforward. Use colour sparingly is what I would advise, really. I'm trying to find my grey. There it is. So that's all cool. Um, shadowing is the other thing that's nice to do. So if you've got a grey, so this again is another big one, Neuland marker, but in grey. If you've got a grey, that works well as a shadow, or you get any other kind of grey um, as a marker. And this is, again, a big fat wedge nib on here. Um, now, when you're colouring a person, you just give them a little bit of shadow on the side there like that. But also you give a little in-circle shadow there. Now, we're not going to cover circles and colouring circles because it's quite a tricky uh, technique to master in itself and we haven't got time for that. So I'm going to just skip over that. But needless to say, if you can get just a little bit of shadow inside the head there, it'll do wonders for your sketch. So now our, our pictures are starting to come to life a bit. As soon as you put that colour and shadow in, they start to jump out at you, which is quite cool. How are the kids doing, Anil? Looking bored. Ah, no, no, they're doing all right. Hold up your time. Do I need to pick up the pace? Yeah, no, you're doing all right, mate. They, oh, They did excellent. a session with Varun as well, so basically... All oh, right. So they're they one, one step ahead. Uh, one step ahead, exactly. Love it. Okay. So... Um, this fella here has got a lot of energy in, the, in there. Why has he got a lot of energy? Well, a lot of it's to do with the angles of these legs um, and the angle is very angular. So that's giving you a lot of energy. But also there's these effect lines that here that are also doing that. And also if I put this underneath him, then that shadow becomes the ground and he's like, above the ground so that's showing a lot of activity when we show movement we can use the shadow representing the ground and how close the shadow is to the object to denote whether it's going slow or it's going fast come on to that in a second i've got two minutes so i'm going to take a i'm just going to take a choice of one of these done all that done all that done all that done all that okay movement yeah i've kind of got onto that subject already so we can talk about movement and shadowing and how that can help Right, so let's say you've got, you want to show someone running, okay? Now they could be running fast or they could be running slow, but how do you show the difference between running slow and running fast? Well, the easiest thing is to just write the word slow and fast next to your man, but you want to be a bit, a bit fancier than that, right? So here we go. Here's a, here's a chap. Okay, so this guy's running. He's got a cap on for some reason, just to show the direction, if it wasn't ob obvious. Okay, he's running. Okay, um, put some effects lines in. Put my shadow in. Okay, all right. Now this next guy, he's also running. Can you see that when I'm drawing? I'll stand out of the way so you can see what's going on here. Okay, he's also running. However, all right, so I'm going to ask you a question on this. Who is the faster runner? Is it this person or is it this person? Mike This one? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so reasons for that is that a couple of things that are contributing to this feeling of this being faster than the other guy. Right, that's my signal to go on to the next section. So. The position of the person or the object to the floor. The closer to the floor they are, the slower they're going, right? The higher off the floor they are, the quicker they're going. That's the thing to remember. Plus also these effect lines. These little kind of things that look like sound waves, effect lines, they're slower. These ones that look like dashes across the page, they're making someone go faster. That's it. There's also other things about angles and things like that. So if you angle someone more forward, 
they look like they're running faster as well. So there's a, there's a number of things there. This, the technique for this though, remember, wherever the object is, so you have to, you have to go start there and pull your pen back and you get this nice kind of finish on the edge of that. And it really kind of helps give it that oomph. Right, okie dokie, right. I'm going to set the clock for the next half an hour. Does anybody need a break? If you do, but we're going to go into the next session, which is, oh, Eddie, look at you with your fancy schmancy iPad, malarkey. Right, so we're going to, oh, Suda. Oh, excellent. Excellent. I like it. Alison, yeah, brilliant stuff. <laughs> Loving it. I love the little swish with the shadow as well on the ground. That's cool. Oh, yeah. Eric, colours. Chris, colours. Love it. Oh, yes. See, it's got movement in there. It's really good. Right. So let's move on. Let's crack on because um, Eddie's, you know, hard taskmaster. The six step guide to doing portraits, right? Everyone likes to do a portrait. It was cool. So here we go. It's simple, right? We start off. It's like the stick man evolution, right? It's just a step approach to it. Right, so we start off with a big U. Oh, okay. We start off with a new page. And then we start off with a big U shape, okay? Big U shape, easy enough, that's step one. Right, step two, add the ears. And they're basically little kind of circular shapes here, semi-circular shapes here. Easy enough, that's step two, simples. Right, now we're going to draw the hair, okay? So this guy's got a parting. You always start with a parting if someone's got a parting. With me, you don't have an option. But here, that, that's where his parting is, okay? Start drawing the hair. Then we add the hair. So you can just kind of do this kind of thing, right? Join the hair behind the ear. This can flow around here like that. And this can come over there like that, okay? So that's that's his hair, um, and then you can you know, put a few little wavy lines in, if you fancy it. Okay, hair, done. Next step is vertical lines for the eyes. So this is, this is the simplified version of the face, okay? Vertical lines for the eyes, and then add a mouth, okay? So I'm just doing a simple mouth like that. Okay. But at this stage, you could decide whether the person's happy or sad and draw the according emotion on there. Um, and then that's it. You, that, that's all you really need to do. That's the basic portrait. Okay. Now, you can start to do other things. Right? You don't have to stop there. If you've got plenty of time, we can do portraits in detail. Dun, 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 dun. So, Let's start again. Right? Well, no, let's leave them, in, leave them there for a second. But let's, let's just remember, if we look at everybody in the camera now who's on the camera, I think most people, everyone's got a different shaped face. Right? Some people have sort of heart shapes. Some people have sort of circles, quite circular. Some are very like oval. You've got shield shapes. There's some basic sort of head shapes, right? You've got like someone's quite circular. And you've got someone who's more sort of oval. And then you've got someone who's more like oval like that. You also have people that are more kind of rectangular. And then you also have people that more, have more of a shield for face shape. And then other people will have more like a square, like square. Very unusual, but good for drawing robots. Okay, so those are the head shapes, right? So when you're looking at someone, you do it when you're going to do, um, so later on we're going to do a selfie right so that means you're going to need to take a photo of yourself and then draw yourself as a sketch so <laughs> those are the shapes you might want to see what your head shape is right but don't draw what you think you look like <laughs> we can't all be you know marilyn monroe or you know whoever so there we go those are the those are the face shapes you've got okay and then you've got eyes so what sort of eyes can you have? Okay, so eyes. So eyes can take the form of circles, yeah? And then if you draw the little kind of pupil up there, you can, you can give them direction of where they're looking. Okay, that's quite a nice little 
technique. They can always be, they can just be just dots as well, okay? But don't forget the eyebrows. They can also be circles with lines. So if you do this, okay, which is a lot easier to draw this, that bit first. Um, and they can be kind of pointed ovals. So this is quite a nice shape eye. Okay, and then you want to make it a lady. There we go. And then don't forget the pupils. More like a Dame Edna thing, I would say that. Right, so other things you can do. So, um, you know, a lot, don't forget, you've still got the default, right? You get into trouble. There's always the default two dashes for eyes. It's just if you start, you want to get more fancy. So here's another eye. It's just an eye shape, but it, you, it's got some eyebrows as well that are like this. It's another way of drawing eyes. There's always the half circle approach. He's got one eye bigger than the other, this person. Um, and then again, there's, these are all variations on a the theme. You know, it's like the oval, the oval eye. And then there's the vertical oval eye as well. Similar to what, that one up there. Okay, so there's different ways of drawing those eyes. Okay, so what else have we got on the face? Noses, right, noses. How do we draw noses? So, there's the three bump nose, okay? The three bump nose is simply this. Okay, they're like a like half a circle, half a circle, half a circle. That's a nose. There's also just the half circle nose, it's like that. Uh, there's the sideways C, just a bit more pronounced. There's the almost six. Uh, there's the U shape. There's the upside down seven. And then there's a the standard V, right? So all those different types of noses can be drawn. Right, mouths. This really is a whistle stop tour, this. So, okay, so your default mouth, straight line, easy peasy, happy, sad. We just covered that, it's easy, right? Um, but then what's quite a nice one is this, it's like a, this triangle mouth. I use that quite a lot, I quite like that triangle mouth. Um, you've also got the circle. Remember that fellow who was in panic had a circle mouth. Um, you can also do like actually fill in the crescent. And then this one's quite a nice one, which is like, which is, I'm calling it the bird. Okay. Also, hair. So hair, facial hair, and that kind of stuff. That's interesting, right? So I'm gonna, there's a number of different kind of things you can do with facial hair, but I have to kind of draw the face for you to see this. So I'm gonna draw a fella. So he's like this. Sticky out ears. He's a bald fella. All the best fellas are bald fellas. Isn't that right, Eddie? No? Okay. Fair enough. Okay, he's gonna, I'm gonna give him one of these noses, which is the, the three C's nose. I'm gonna give him like a triangle mouth. Okay. Right, so he could have something like stubble, right? So if I was to just give him stubble, that's really easy to do, right? There's just all these dots everywhere. Give him a load of stubble. Can take some time to give someone a lot of stubble. Right, it's got some stubble. Easy enough, right? Um, or it may be, maybe, this guy. I'm going to do again. Um, what eyes? What eyes shall we have? Let's have a look. What eyes should we give him? Let's give him half circles. Okay. Remember this half circles, fella. Always remember the eyebrows. Eyebrows maketh the man, as the saying goes. Um, I'm going to give him a sideways C kind of thing for for his nose. All right. And then for his mouth, I'm probably going to do, actually, for his mouth, I'm not going to draw a mouth because I'm going to give this guy a nice, big, crazy moustache. Okay. And then 
a little kind of bit of a goatee there as well. So you can experiment with these things with these different eye shapes, yeah, and mouth shapes and eye shapes. You can really get different kind of faces, okay? So when you need to create someone like yourself, who's very distinctive, you need to pick out those points that are obvious. Of course, if someone's wearing glasses, that's great. Yeah, that's a real treat because it's easy to dig glasses. Just a couple of circles. Um, if someone's got a really great hairstyle, then, you know, it's even better to kind of draw out as well, you know. So, you know, treat yourself, have a go. Right, so if you want to show someone who's got, um, who's not a young person, obviously all of us here are young and pretty, um, <laughs> but, you know, some people aren't as good, as fortunate as ourselves, right? Um, a little bit older, so you have to show their age. So how to do that? So with the eyes, you can draw bags under the eyes. So let's say you've got this kind of eye shape going on. Okay. You just draw this little thing here and it puts bags underneath the person's eyes. Okay, and of course, if you've got oval shaped eyes, of course you can do a similar thing here with your oval shaped eyes and just put them this way like that. Looks cross-eyed. Okay, then the other thing you can draw is someone who's relaxed or sleepy. Now that's really easy. So if you've got these kind of, if you've got these vertical, vertical, um, oval shapes okay it's really easy to do the sleepiness right because i'm going to put the eye in there and then i'm just going to go like that like the eyelid kind of drawing the eyelid yeah so um the other thing you can draw is like crow's feet on the eye so let's draw this one like the little wrinkles there on the eye um, and then also you can make it you can do all the oval ones as well that's a terrible oval i'm drawing the wrong side here i'm not you can usually draw from right to left um so my drawing is going all over the shop yeah it's the crow's feet they're making the eyes look old there okay that's cool so how do you make um other things like mouth and nose you can join together as well so this guy he's got a u-shaped nose all right and he's got a, just a plain sort of straight mouth like that but if you just kind of join the nose to the mouth that gives him a certain age it's about to kind of join the wrinkles right um and you can also put kind of wrinkles on the on the mouth as well so on. be careful he doesn't start to look like frankenstein's monster though okay unless you want to draw frankenstein's monster then you need to put a bolt for his neck as well. Okay, right. How are we doing for time? Okay, we've got 15 minutes left. So, the other thing, let's just do some hairstyles and then I'm going to go ask you guys to do a self portrait. <laughs> That's the funny, fun side of it, right? So, um, here we go. So, here's some nice hairstyles. So, this person's got a really great haircut, right? So I'm going to draw the face. So we start off with our how to draw a portrait, right? We always start off with a U, right? Then we draw the ears, okay? That's all good. And then we're going to go, I'm going to go, rather than just slitty eyes, I'm going to do a decent eye. And this eye is going to have some mascara on it, okay? Um, Nice clean eyebrows over there. So we've got a little little U-shaped nose. That's nice, and a triangle for a mouth. Okay. Um, now the hairstyle with this. If you're trying to draw a hairstyle like this, always start with the parting. Right, so I'll start with the parting, which, as you can see, is like an upside-down V shape. Okay, and then draw across the line there and then you're gonna what you can do is draw a big hair shape around there that comes and joins at the top of the ear there right so it sort of goes around like this uh, and then you've got this nice kind of layered thing going over the back here um, yeah and then just a sort of there 
So you can experiment with all kinds of different hairstyles. And actually, when you colour it in, that's when it really starts comes to life, as per usual. Now, I'm going to give her, because I only brought my yellows and greys, I didn't bring all my other colours. Actually, it's a little tip for you. If you're going to do a sketch noting, just go for black, go for a dark black for your outline, um, and then a lighter colour for, for your highlight, and then just one com complementary colour to your highlight and one contrasting. That's it. That's all you need. Um, if you if you do what I do is buy a whole set of different colours and stuff, you find that you don't use any of them. So this lady has got nice bright orangey yellow hair. So get fun with your colouring. You know, not all of us can go to work and spend our time colouring. Hey girls. Mm -hmm. Is that right girls? Do you think, when you grow up, do you think you'll have a job going to work and drawing pictures and colouring in? Um, maybe. Mm. maybe. Yeah, maybe. It'd be good though, wouldn't it, if you got paid for doing this stuff? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Right, okay, here we go. So, lovely jubbly. There we go. A portrait. Now, it looks half reasonable. In fact, I'm going to give it a bit of shadow. So I'm just going to put this kind of a shadow down the side of the face here like that. Okay. And maybe a bit of a shadow in there. Okay. Um, but what's really going to kind of, what, how strangely, the, the thing that really makes this stand out is when you draw the neck and a bit of the body. So, and you don't have to be do anything fancy apart from just that. That's kind of enough, really. But then you might want to actually kind of show what kind of neckline she's got on. Um, and then you might actually start to draw some of the arms as well. Uh, maybe she's kind of like her arm is kind of up here somewhere. Okay. Starting to look a bit weird now. I didn't think this through when I started drawing. Anyway, you get the picture. You only need, really need this element of it. And then when you've got that element of it, you can then colour that in as well if you want. This is where the nice contrasting colour will help. I don't have one, so I'm just going to go give it that kind of idea that it's that colour by just colouring part of it. Okay. All right. So... We have got about 12 minutes left. So we're gonna end off with, we didn't cover a lot of stuff like settings and perspectives and all this kind of stuff, which is fun. Um, and all these other jumping and running people and things, but we'll do that. That's for the big course in an hour. We are restricted, but we have got a lot done today. But the final thing is I like you all, because this is a bit of fun, to do a self portrait, okay? So if you can't remember what you look like, hopefully you've got a phone and these phones can take photos of yourself. Right, so you can do a selfie and then you can use that as your inspiration for, for drawing a self-portrait. So I'm going to hand this over to you guys. I'm going to put, I think, five minutes on the clock. Let's not take too much time over it, right? There's only so much um, embellishment you can... Yeah, I'm digging myself a hole now. Anyway, so five minutes <laughs> on the clock, guys. Over to you. Start with your self-portrait, and then at the end of it, I will clack, you know, ring a bell or whatever, or come back, and they will all show our self-portraits. So away you go. Right.
it's not it's not as it's, it's harder than you think sometimes <laughs> <laughs> the danger that you want to make yourself look better than you really <laughs> Okay, I think we've got like a couple of minutes left to apply the finishing touches to your masterpieces. <laughs> so time like, at times like this, I realize that I have no distinguishing features. I'm immediately forgettable. I might have to grow a beard or something. What do you reckon, Chris? Do you reckon I should... Work on a beard or something. You're muted. It's actually a lockdown beard. I didn't have this. Uh, oh, right. Seven weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent work, my friend. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I, I've tried growing a beard before. It just it doesn't work for me. It just comes That's out. Why I saved it for lockdown, if I'm honest. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> 
Cool. Okay, guys, I'm going to bring us back into the room. Um, so let's go round. I mean, this is only going to work for those people on video. I know there's lots of people who haven't got their video on. If you want to, you can switch your video on just to show us your face that we haven't seen yet and the portrait likeness. But those who aren't, oh, wow. Excellent. All right. All right. Let's go around. Come on, Eddie's still working on it. Oh, Eve. Nice work. I like it. Yeah. Any kid? That's Layla. This is my, we did portraits of each other, Darren. So. Oh, did you? Oh, I see, yeah. My youngest. Nice Excellent. Uh, I think that's me. Layla, put that up. Oh, no, it's Eve. Right, it's okay. Me. Eve. Keep them holding up, guys. I'm going to go around them. Oh, very good. Very good. Not, not necessarily you, using all your techniques, Darren. Hold on. Uh, so just some of them. Eric, <laughs> that's looking good. Yeah. Oh, very good. Perfect hair. Yeah, the hair's good, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it actually looks like it it's amazing the, right, the, um, it's so hard to get right you get the eyes yeah. wrong and, and the person just looks crazy yeah but no I like it it's really good good likeness my one's rubbish so I'm not going to show mine so um, <laughs> Eddie what have you got Eddie very good he's even got his t-shirt in there the light bulb t-shirt excellent liking that Eddie cool very cartoony look at that t-shirt I want one of those uh, Andrew Ex that is very, Andrew, that is really good. Everyone's doing really, really well. I feel really bad because mine's from I'm going to show. Uh, Alison, where's yours? Come on. Yeah. Excellent. You see, the thing is, you've got some nice distinctive features you can pull out that, that hair. That's great, you know. Brilliant. Uh, Suda, let's have a look at it. Can I show yours again? Yes, look at that. Yeah. Very well, nice. Really good. Excellent. Angie? <laughs> Excellent. I like it. Very, very Picasso-esque. Love it. <laughs> Chris, let's see yours. Excellent. Excellent work, Chris. Yeah. The beard and everything. Perfect. Good work, everybody. Well, that's actually, we're, we're done for time. So I'm going to wrap up there and say, I'm not going to divulge mine. Well, you can see it in the background there. It's awful. <laughs> that's when I, when I, would, I drew that, I realised that I have no distinguishing features. <laughs> so, okay, cool. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for your time. I hope you've had some fun. Um, before, before thanks for your attention. Darren. Thank you, Darren. Thank you. Bye. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, before, before you run, before you drop off, uh, just a quick announcement. Um, so we've got um, a very exciting session coming up next month. We've managed to secure a man called Klaus Leopold, uh, who is oh, yeah. um, well renowned in the agile industry. And he's going to do a meetup for us next month. At, at the moment, I think it's 17th of June. I don't have any details about what he's going to talk about or um, timings, all that kind of stuff. So that, that information will follow. But uh, yeah, something big to look forward to there, which is fantastic. Um, you know, yeah, think we're, we're, we're going well with our online meetups at the moment. We're getting some really good uh, guests, uh, uh, speakers in. And just again, final thanks for Darren for doing this tonight. I know something that's not necessarily easy to do virtually and remotely, but you've done a smashing job. And I can't wait to, to check out the full course. <laughs> It's going to be fun. <laughs> well done, everybody. I hope to see you back here again Go. For the next session. Thanks a lot. Right. Thank Thanks very much. Thank, Thank you. Guys. Have a good one.